And welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Before you, you see the uh, much talked about DJI HDFPV system. And I have my hands on one. The first thing I noticed is that look how small it is. I was expecting something much bigger for the goggle unit. That's actually much smaller than I thought. That's quite amazing. And also, this is a bit lighter than I expected. This is the air unit. So even in the box, it's lighter than I expected. Those are both good things. Good things. But as I say, thank you to the kind people at Ferntech New Zealand, who I think are the DJI distributors. They saw my video and they said, we will lend you this to have a look at and to test and to tell your viewers what you think of it. Note, lend, they haven't given, it's not a freebie, it's not a freebie, I have to send it back and if I break it, I probably have to pay for it, which means I'll probably have to declare bankruptcy and you'll have to come and bail me out of jail. But I'm going to do my best to answer the many unanswered questions that people have been asking. Now, there have been quite a few questions that have been answered and I think people haven't seen the answers, so what I've got in the description of this video are some links to other YouTube videos where some of these questions are answered. For example, people have said, can you do a teardown please? We want to see what's inside it. Well, as I said, this isn't mine, it's on loan. If I break it, it's going to cost me a fortune. So I will point you at someone who's already done a teardown. They have taken apart the air unit and taken apart the goggles unit. To be honest, there's not a lot to see, but if you want to see it, go and look at the description, click on the link, it'll take you there. Um, also, people have said, well, what about this power thing? And is, is it, it, in my country, will it be 700 milliwatts like America or will it be 25 milliwatts? Well, I don't know, but, but most people were under the impression that once you basically set it up, you're stuck at whatever power level DJI decides you're gonna be using. So if you buy it in Europe and you go online and, and activate it, then you'll be stuck with 25 milliwatts. Well, that's not quite true because my good friend Ian has discovered that there are ways to change the power level. So if you're in Europe, you'll be able to switch it up to 700. And if you're in America and you want to fly in a quad race, you better switch it down to 25. So again, a link to Ian's video in the description of this video. And if there's anything else I've found that I think is relevant, I'll also link that in too, because part of my job here is to not only give you information, but point you at other sources of information. If I find a really good video that's got all the answers you need, I'm going to point you at it. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. Uh, this is basically, I make these videos for you, the viewer, not for me. So if I can help you in any way, it's not about making extra videos to make me rich. Ha, ha, ha. But it's about giving you a connection to the information that you want. So I will be testing other stuff though. People have said, you know, and some people have tested in fact, I'll point you at another video where someone tested the DJI alongside an analog system. And what did they find? Well, click on the link in the description. But basically, there is some degree of interference, but it's it looks to be relatively minor. But I'll be doing further testing on that because I, I that was sort of a, a very superficial quick check. I'm going to look a little bit deeper on that and we'll see how we go. And the other thing is range. Well, I mean, Rotor Riot tested this thing and I got what 2.1, 2.2 kilometers. I've seen other people test it that on a desert lake. They got about the same, maybe a little less. So I'm thinking that's probably what you can expect at 700 milliwatts. But what about 25 milliwatts? How far can you go? Well, I haven't seen a test on that yet. There probably is one, but I will set this to 25 milliwatts and just see how far we can go on 25, because that's also very important for people in Europe who want to stay within the law. Now, as I say, there is so much to look at with this unit, really, really so much that it's going to take me more than one video. It's going to take me a bit of time. And since it's only a loaner, if I forget to send it back, I'll have to pay for it. So I have to get everything squished into as, as short a time frame as possible. And the weather is, it's winter, it's midwinter here. And as you saw on my Coffee and a Chat video on my extra channel, the weather isn't looking too flash at the moment. So I'm here in the studio today to try and get this on the bench stuff done, get a bit of that done, and find a frame. I've got my cine tank, I think. Oh no, I've lost it. Anyway, <laughs> I've got a couple of quads. I'm going to put it on a, on a quad. I'm going to put it on a fixed wing. I'm even going to try and put it on the Outlaw 250, sub 250 gram, which it won't be sub 250 once I've added this, but you know, just, just for, um, for giggles, we'll put it on the sub 250 and see how she goes. That's what I plan to do. Other people have said, what about these antennas? Do these, you know, these look like pretty crappy antennas. If you replace those, will it work better? And I've got, I'll have a whole lot to say on that because someone has tested it and said they found they got a massive increase in range by putting different antennas on. But, but I would um, give you some caution on doing that. And I'll tell you why in 
one of the videos that's coming up. And let's face it, if you've already got one and a half miles of range, do you really need to get more than that if you're in America? Well, everyone wants to fly BV loss, but um, yeah, there are risks associated with putting different antennas on here. I'll tell you about that in the upcoming video. So, as I said, if you've got specific questions that you haven't seen anybody else answer and you think I can, then put them in the comments section. I will do my best to come up with that answer for you in the shortest possible time frame. So now I'm not going to unbox it on screen because it's uh, there's probably a million and one unboxing videos, all boring as bat poo. But I will now just get to grips with this, have a play with it, and write down my schedule of what I'm going to do over the next week or so as I start rolling out the videos to address your questions. That's it for this video. Oh yeah, I also got this in the mail today. Yeah, Because what I will be doing is doing a complete comparison between analog and digital in terms of weight, in terms of cost, in terms of um, build complexity, in terms of performance, the whole thing. So you'll be able to see for yourself, is it worth paying the premium for HD digital or are you going to be better off doing something with analog and getting almost the same results perhaps? We don't know. Anyway, stay tuned. That's coming real shortly. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down, but tell me why so I can lift my game. And you'll notice no pre-rolls, or no, sorry, there were pre-rolls, no mid-rolls in this video. Again, there'll never be mid-rolls in my videos as long as I've got my Patreon supporters behind me. So there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. See you real soon in an upcoming video on RC Model Reviews. Bye for now.